was a cool but clear fall day on September 14, 2014, when many former students of the St. Lawrence Lutheran School Tuscola District gathered for a reunion at the same one-room schoolhouse where they had been students many decades ago. This building, located off Frankenmuth Road in Vassar, now owned by Ty and Sharon Schmidt, was established in 1898 and served as a school educating students from 1898 to 1946. Once inside, the tall tales began, with the former students reminiscing about what life was like in and around this school building many decades ago. Oh, we was outside. But where was it outside? Outside here. No, I mean, was the ladies and the men separate? No, men was over here. And if he went to the bathroom, he went out that door. No, you could go out this way. Most of the time, we went out. how much in the hurry. But that went in the basement or outside. I think this building is built like a yeah. good dog house, you know that? It's built, built good, good, yeah. yeah. I'll bet you that's, that's timbers. Timbers. Yeah. 1896. We probably, our forefathers, they all helped together and built this thing like the Amish do. You know what? It was built good. That's what we think. I wouldn't be here if he was on the floor. I'll bet you he was a swing off. No, no, no. I believe it was taken out of the woods and put in here. Yeah? Yeah. 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 The front PT is a peach tree, right next to the steps. Really? As long as I went to school, the peach tree was there. This garden was over on the, the, behind us. The, you know, the goats are all over back there. You know. How are you doing? Oh, 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 Before long, others had gathered outside for this reunion, which was celebrated in prayer and in song. We thank you for the many years you provided us with an education here in this school. It was not only learning the ABCs, but a Christian education where we learn to know our Savior and put our trust in Him. The teachers, Mr. Palmrider and Mr. Meyer, were talented Christian educators who gave us a basic elementary education that we needed for our life. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together this day to celebrate, to reminisce, and to enjoy Christian fellowship. Continue to keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. From there, the stories just started flowing both outside the school and inside. About days gone by, amazingly, during the nearly 50 years this one-room schoolhouse was utilized as a school, there were only two teachers, Henry Palmrider from 1898 to 1926 and Louis Meyer from 1926 to 1946. 
Some of the foreigner students' most fondest memories were Mr. Meyer, or Teacher Meyer, as they called him. When you were here, what do you remember? Oh, I remember the field trips across the road to the sugar bush. He taught us uh, the wildflowers, how to learn all the, you know, the different flowers. And... Uh, we had a uh, rhythm band. And a band, yes. He taught me to play the E flat alto sax. And uh, I continued that for many years. He was a talented man, you know. Uh, he was uh, Boy Scouts, teaching music, teaching instruments. And besides all the, the other the good things we learned in school, I mean, this, this was a terrific part of my this life. job. And the children, uh, and children learned it from, from the next grade and on down, you know, and yeah. then you knew a lot of it already, you know. Yeah, that's the way I think, you know. So the older kids had to take the younger ones out of their wing a little bit, you think? So kind of, yeah. yeah. And you heard when they were taught, and you next year you already learned a lot from the other grades. You know. It worked. And, uh, it looks like we all got a hint. It looks like all these guys around here made it. Yeah. And they're all good Christians, too. Yeah. I became a Lutheran teacher because of Mr. Meyer, Roy Meyer. I combed my hair back just like he did. <laughs> and I taught in Lutheran schools for 27 years. He had a, he he had a piano band. <laughs> yeah. So he had to lay over it and he had a little something in his hand. <laughs> I think he called it the Board of Education. <laughs> Those comments were a blessing to hear for Gerhard Meyer, Teacher Meyer's son, who attended the reunion along with his sister. He was a great dad. I just uh, had him uh, first grade, second grade as a teacher, then we moved away and got into two-room and three-room school. So uh, I just remember sitting in the front, way in the right-hand side in the first grade, second grade, third grade, as he went over. So I never got over on the right side of, me, of the room. <laughs> so you came here for the first time, I mean today as you, as you came, what were your thoughts coming in thinking about what went on here, what your life was like with him back here? I just have good memories of, of being here, of just the family of the school and being greeted by everybody here after 50, 60 years, it's quite impressive to see all the people, hear them talk about my dad. The Meyer family live right next door to the schoolhouse, where the Schmidt family lives today. And then we saw the cistern, and I remember Mom cleaning the cistern to clean it out. And I usually was there with the pail and carried the suit out with <laughs> And uh, anyway, Dad had made a platform there to put the cistern. So he was a lot of lobbying in the family, and lots of food and vegetables came there. And then I got inside the house, and I didn't change much. It was really nice to see it. I remember. Of course, all of us have heard stories from our grandparents about how they had to walk 10 miles in the snow both ways to get to and from school. Well, some of that may actually be true when it comes to this group and their travels to get to school. Yeah, how far? Some we left over here. Sometimes we walk across the field to get to school. The rest of their memories largely focused on recess, subjects they were taught in school, their faith in God, and the strong bond they continue to share all these years. Jesus was playing ball out here and he was a pitcher and okay. whatever they yeah, had. And, uh, yeah. and, and uh, we, uh, by, by April we had our memory work done and from there on we went to the German and English Catechism and learned from that. And 
and in general in April and May and when it before school went out we went down and took a lot of trips down over to the Uncle Henry's so woods okay. or sugar bush for learned all the trees oh, oh, and, 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 uh, made uh, pressed all the, for all the, time all the leaves yeah. for, and, and, and made a leaf book, made a flower book. Yeah. <laughs> It was a wonderful time. I got everybody tired. No, I think he had, we had a whole furnace in the basement at that time. I think I don't remember what went on that thing over there. Was it the fired if we had a little wood stove in there or not? But I remember it was. And I like, like, I said one time, I think. When we when we couldn't walk down here, Dad hooked up the horses and the sled and drove us down here because he always had a take some milk cans down there in a stroller. Dad was his. Yeah, religion was a big part of it. Yeah, religion was very much a big part. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dad. For sure. Well, I just remember he always took us down to the to the woods here for Jack and the Poet. He had us eat a Jack and the Poet that was strong in our mouth. Oh yeah. And burned our mouth. It churned. Yeah. And we had to go outside to the bathroom. Did anybody mention that? Oh, tell us about that. <laughs> we had to put our two finger off like this and we had to go to the bathroom. So we had to go to an outhouse, and that was right around the corner here. Right. <laughs> no, I didn't get a spanking from Teacher Meyer, no way. <laughs> I was too good. <laughs> I had a slap on my face. It was a German school, but that's where we learned our English. <laughs> that's about it. Another thing we did after, uh, in, in, in April or in May, we go down to Tuscola and we play Tuscola, the Tuscola school, mm -hmm. um, softball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Public school. Yeah, we Public did. school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? We played against yeah, the softball. Yeah. Turn them oh, down yeah. there. <laughs> and I think we always beat them, too. The <laughs> school here, that was in 1927. And I was here for the eight, eight years to one teacher. And believe me, you learn from the, the grade before you and after grade, it was a good education. You learn the most of the time. tables and the Biden tables, and I still know. <laughs> If you, if you were a good learner, you did a lot of outside, uh, hiking to the woods. We made maple syrup in the spring and took the whole kids down in the woods for uh, a reward. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, it, it was a. Uh, it was not a fancy school. We, had, we didn't have all the fancy doodads. The rest of them had. We, we got an education out of it. I was always glad to come to school. I didn't have to do any work at home on the farm. Is that it? Okay. What was the teacher like? Strict? Uh, how, how the heck did uh, you guys ever learn anything? You know. You didn't learn anything from him. You had a problem. Yeah, he was very strict. Yeah. But he liked to play ball. Really? Okay. <laughs> he always played ball, even when it was bit after recess. Reunion organizer and a schoolhouse alum, Irene Rodimer, was thankful so many of her former classmates could attend this special event, and she reflected on its importance. It was the most wonderful time of our lives, and all the kids that grew up here. I know them all, I remember them all, and, and we just had good times, and so many of them asked me, why don't you get them all together? In fact, it was Teacher Meyer's kids that wanted us to get reunion once while he was still alive. So this has been an ongoing thing for 10, 11 years, but it's finally through for because of Teichmidt. 
what was the name of the school? I'm kind of, it's the, was it the St. Lawrence Lutheran School in the Tuscola School District? Is that what it was? Tell me, let's, let's clear that up, the yes. name of the school. What it was, was the St. Lawrence School, but it was the Tuscola District, and we were special people. Okay. <laughs> Everybody that went to the school were special people. We had a special teacher, William Meyer. He was a Boy Scout leader. He was a band director. Every morning, every we, every, there's a person that went to school here that didn't know the the, the music, A B C S D E F G, and, you know, because we played five, we played tonet, and we all played in the band. That's how come I'm still playing. In the band. And what was what were the grades in the school? First to eighth grade. Okay. So how in the heck did Teacher Meyer manage to teach kids who were first to eighth grade? Do you remember what that was, well, how he managed all that? Well, the eighth graders so often checked our papers. And uh, they would even, when we had our uh, really key memorizing, they we would sometimes would memorize it to the older kids. And uh, we, we carried it. Everything was put on the blackboard. We didn't have any books to speak of. Except for Bible stories and factors. Really and how important was religion, Bible study, catechism? How much was that part of it? Well, we learned it in German and in English. Okay. We learned it in English first, and then when we were done with English, they had to recite it in German. Right. But that was only until about the fourth grade. Okay. And you were here how many years? Seven then? years. Okay. What was your day like? I mean, in terms of how far did you? Did you have to go to get here? Did you have chores beforehand? And then you went to school and chores. I mean, what was that typical day in, in, for your, your life? I guess? We all got up early and we all moved our two cups. <laughs> then we, we didn't have to take a shower every day. We just went to school. And we drove our bikes whenever possible or walked. And we never had a snow day. We just went. And I don't think there were any sick days because I remember I used to get a earache and then teacher Meyer would send me over to his house and Nora would put me in bed till school was out and then the kids would drive him with a bike. What else would you like to share? Anything that you remember that's important that, that people know about? Well, like we said before, we went in the summer we went to a school to play the kids in the school and that was a heck of a time. And it wasn't just you know, our ball teams were from first to eighth grade, and we never felt when I was in second or third grade, you know, they would throw the ball so we could hit it. And we played right here in this, we'd knock them across the street, we never worried whether there was a car coming or not. <laughs> they would know there's a school here. And uh, and all, another thing was, since it was a Boy Scout leader, we learned how to tie ropes. We went down in the woods, gathered all the flowers, we knew the names of the flowers, and when the sheavers made um, syrup, we went down and we all got a cup of syrup to drink. It was just the most precious days to have. And on average, how many kids would you have in the, in the schoolhouse at any given time? Between 30 and 40. Okay. Okay. Well, good like, uh, there was, some were just two kids, some there were three. Mine were four, a lot of them were four. Mm -hmm. And the one, of course, was seven. <laughs> Those were the naughty kids. <laughs> ah, that's great. <laughs> Too many of them. For Ty Schmidt and his family, who now own the property, it meant a lot to them to host this reunion in an effort to keep this part of Frankenmuth history alive for many generations to come. I guess the impetus of the whole project was... Um, when Sharon and I bought this piece of property, we realized that the schoolhouse had had some historical value. And really, what I really wanted to do is just get the stories in place from the original people that went to school here. And uh, as things went on, uh, I started digging around, getting people's names that were here. And, and pretty soon I uh, did hook up with Irene, and, and she, uh, she took it to the next level, wanted to do a reunion. And, well, what, what better thing to do than to have everybody get together and, and have their union? And I guess Sharon, our big goal for the thing is, is that um, when we get done refurbishing the building and everything, we'd like to invite school children to come out here. And with this opportunity of having the people that actually went to school here and their stories, uh, I'd like to see the kids' faces and everything when they realize that, hey, these were actual people that sat in this classroom together 
and uh, enjoyed the experience of a one room school. And, you know, like I said, when Sharon and I bought the property, uh, you know, we saw that right away, and I mean, it just drew our hearts to it. And kind of being little history buffs locally, it was, it was something really neat to have a piece of our actual church history where we, uh, well, my wife especially, because uh, their family actually settled in the Franklin area, and with St. Lawrence being a major you know, part of that, uh, having the St. Lawrence One Room Schoolhouse was really kind of a treat for us. This house and this structure uh, is a twin to another one, identical to it, which is on the west side of town. And 1891 is, is what we've got. Uh, and something to say that, you know, when, when, when God does things and He builds things, uh, He does things perfect, right? right? Well, when we bought the house, it was, it was in quite disrepair. I mean, it, it was literally two by fours. And we start measuring rooms. And uh, when these guys built the house, and the school is no different, uh, these rooms weren't off a sixteenth of an inch. And and you, you know you go into new construction and everything, and you got walls that are crooked and stuff. This this place is just square as can be. And another testament to how you know these people were in, in the heritage they have. When they built the schoolhouse, right now the, the basement, uh, the structure, the foundation is in pretty poor shape. Uh, but because of all the rigidity in the building itself, uh, the foundation's weak, but this building is square as can be. And so part of our vision is to bring this thing back to its full luster. I was going to ask you what. Reading and writing and arithmetic taught to the tune of the hickory stick. You were my queen in calico. I was your best for barefoot bull. You rode by my sleigh. I love you, Joe. When we were a couple of kids. Well, that was a little bit out of tune. Let's try it again. Golden rule days. Reading and writing and arithmetic. Talk to the tune of the hickory stick. You were my queen in Calico, I was your best.